Alrighty folks, welcome back. More tech node from craft on the server today with Mickey and Sim. And we're going to learn us some technology for sure. Yeah. We, we got all this uh, like low tech, you know, big honking machines and stuff. And they are super cool. But I have come to find out that there are, there are powerful, powerful things we can do with the magic mechanism. So... Uh, for instance, Sim has built me a stick of power, which apparently is called an atomic disassemble thingerator. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but it apparently digs and um, digs dirt and gravel and can break logs and and can break stone as well. So uh, it's a little well. Okay, so it has different modes, and you can shift right click to change the modes. If you put it in fast mode. It's a little scary on dirt and gravel. And it's pretty good on stone. In fact, if we just pull out our blue steel pickaxe with a 34% bonus uh, on smooth stone, you can see it takes a little bit to uh, break those versus the magic stick is, well, faster except for a little bit of server lag there. All right. Anyway, so much nicer. And there's some other stuff that we want to do with Mechanism that's going to be better than what we have here with IE. So I think, Sim, if you're willing to teach the poor Neanderthals over here in, in Starter Town some, some Mechanism, maybe I'll come over to your base. I'm How's that sound? Anyway, so I'm a, I will <laughs> teach you my ways. Oh, all right. Sounds so... Mysterious. All right, so Sims Base is down here to the southwest across the ocean. Uh, it's not in the lovely place. Here it is. There's Sims Domain. So I guess we should probably get out a boat and start heading. Well, actually, there's another way. More, more of Sim Magic. I'm gonna get a drink here on the way out. Uh, more of Sim Magic, and we can now uh, we're we're more connected. We're, it's a little easier to get from point A to point B. So more, I don't know. I, I hope this thing will work. And I guess it, it disassembles all your molecules and then shoots you across the world and reassembles you somewhere else is what I understand. Fortunately, it seems to be um, compatible with our power grid. So we're able to power this thing up. Oh, which reminds me one more thing before I go over. Before we step into the pink portal of strangeness, um, I made a charging station from Immersive Engineering because IE is awesome. And if we just right click our stick of power in there, we get these cute little green flashes that says, hey, we're charging up. And then once they all go green, we're done charging. And poof, it's all charged. Uh, now Sim also did make me a basic energy cube, which holds 800,000 RF. And that's a way to charge it out in the world uh, like take it with you when you go mining and stuff but anyway all right with no further mucking around I see it's just turning nighttime again but whatever it's always nighttime let's go through the pink portal of yeah all right here we go hey I think it works Sim. Yay! I feel like all my bits are still here oh sure. ep, there you're just out for fly flying around a bit are you huh yeah, well, let me just yeah. check and make sure so okay right. My barrel's here. The, the, the mine. My my helm's still on. My arms are still okay. I guess that teleporter thing works. It's a little sure scary, if you fine. ask me. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Ah. Nothing wrong with it. Come All join right. Join me upstairs. Um, yeah. So since I can't fly, I think yeah. Here we go. Here's the stairs. I was gonna say unless he just removed the stairs, you know. So. Us Neanderthals can't get into his base or something. Uh, soon. Soon. Soon, TM. Yes. Ah, there you are. That's right. There's stairs back here behind the the bloomery, kind of hidden away. I know what a bloomery is. Hey, I know what this is too. That's a blast furnace. Yeah, yeah. You make that with this, this iron and stuff and clay. My museum. <laughs> I've cleaned this place up rather well. Now it's just used oh, to display yeah. all the ancient technology. Oh, 
the display of ancient technology. I like it. I just started. Whoops. Yeah, right. I shouldn't do that. I just started um, making some barrels down there as well. So Java barrels are very nice, of course. So I like your wall of random smooth stones. Yes. Anything else new on this level, or is this just uh, all the ancient um, technologies? There is something new, but you might want to show that off yourself. So I'm not sure um, what your hmm. attitude is towards refrigerators. Oh yeah, we're gonna get that get to that next episode. I actually want to go craft that and everything. So I all think right, we'll so uh, we save that for next time. We got right. plans for today. We need to learn the ways of the mechanism, and I've brought some things to. Be now, processified and things. You should be more familiar with. Ah, immersive engineering. Oh yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Crusher. See, things go in the top, and then the big. Well, getting block leg, or uh, frame rate leg, uh, and then the big things on the top turn and they crush crush things up. I get it. That totally makes sense. That that's a pretty pink chest you got there. Just saying. Anyway, yes, it's a wonderfully pink chest which holds things that you can't put in TFC chests. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can put logs and things in there? Mm. Well, if I wanted to go and put a stack of ingots into that chest, for example. What? There's no stack of ingots in there. Yeah, have another look. It, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, the seal. Were you gonna put a stack of ingots? Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. 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 So it does hold uh, ingots and things. Good to know. I I had seen that these exist, but I have not made any yet. So I may have to make some of those. All right. Moving. Moving on. Moving along. So we've gone from ancient technology to real power, true power of immersive engineering, and now up here we have magic glowy bits. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, we haven't shown off your uh, water wheels yet. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't light properly. But yes, these are these are wonderful, beautiful immersive engineering water wheels. And you have what three of them? I have three of them. Yes. Yeah. Look at that. And two windmills. Can, can oh, and two windmills. All right. However, Sorry. that was not enough. Oh, and oh, and now you have mech windmills too. Sweet. Yes. All right, can I get off of here without killing myself? Hmm. You should be able to. Probably. Just watch out for the holes in the floor. Ooh, they make noise. They do. Bounding block. <laughs> Wayla says it's a bounding block from mechanism. That's kind of funny. All right, so those make 73 RF per tick. Is that what I'm reading? That's around about the, uh, their output, yep. Yeah, okay. And I wanted to show the... Oh, wow, what's this? A well, railcraft water tank? I needed deionized water. Mm. Um, and this is the simplest means of getting it. All right. Uh, that one was painful because... Because of all the different mod interactions and the various changes that have been made, quite often when you go into NEI looking for something, you can't find a path to it through NEI. You really do have to jiggle around sometimes to be able to work things out. And deionized water was one of those things. So, yep. Yeah, that is a lifesaver. Absolutely. So we'll get to why you need that in a minute, I guess. But I'm just looking at your waterfall. It's it falling over the edge for kind of aesthetics and then it's also falling this way going around one water mill down to the next one going around that water mill down to the next one that that's uh, that's pretty genius very nice very nice alright but I think I got us off a of track a little bit except actually right. the the, uh, the water tank was something that was needed so not that far off a of track what were we doing down here okay so if you want to get into mechanism, yep. um, you're going to need a few machines. Uh, and it's going to start out here with these two in front of us, the enrichment chamber and the metallurgic infuser. Okay. In fact, if my memory serves me correctly, the infuser is the first one that you need. Uh, I think that I is correct. Um, uh, the enrichment chamber 
basically takes power um, and you feed stuff into it and it enriches it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, if I wanted to take some redstone, and I'm not sure whether we can share inventories, we'll have a look. Uh, if I put a piece of redstone into the enrichment chamber, oh yeah, there it goes. I get some compressed redstone. Interesting. Uh, the compressed redstone is used to infuse other materials, and it's worth a hundred units, um, as oh. opposed to a single piece of redstone, which is worth one unit. So. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah so you really want to infuse. Uh, you really want to infuse enrich it because, first. Some of the things need to be infused with diamond, and yes, diamond is not easy to obtain. All right. Uh, you get it in pretty small quantities. Yep. You infuse things by shoving them into a metallurgic infuser and adding whatever it is that you need to infuse it with, whether it's the redstone or the other bits and pieces. Right. So I just clicked on the recipes, and it's showing me, for instance, you can use diamond dust to infuse an enriched alloy to make reinforced alloy and mm. other bits uh, and pieces and things. Now the other important thing that you want is the enrichment chamber can be used to double your ores, which for some of the rarer ores is, well, yeah, considering the costs of some of the builds in TFC, mm -hmm. um, getting the most out of your ores is definitely a big thing. Um, the other reason that I went with um, mechanism as quickly as I could was some of the things that you can um, make in TFC using the anvil can also be crafted together using dusts. Uh, but to get those dusts, you need mechanism. But it, it certainly allows you to skip some crafting steps and um, some days spent in front of the uh, anvil. So. Sure. Sure. What is this well. magic block here? Okay, now it says this is a crusher, but it it doesn't look anything like a crusher to me. Oh, it, it is. There's it's no conveyor it, belt. It, it has to compress both time and space. Oh. Um, so therefore, the device itself is actually quite compact when you compare it to uh, the behemoth downstairs. Is this one of those um, things where it's bigger on the inside? Pretty much, because morning, this rooster. thing is very efficient. Um, <laughs> And uh, I've got some upgrades. Uh, in fact, it's probably a good oh, idea really? if you have a quick look at the interface. Uh -huh. This particular machine um, covers most of the different options. So up in the top uh, right-hand corner, yep. you can add upgrades, uh, which will increase its energy efficiency and its speed and oh, cool. its use of various bits and pieces. Um, you can uh, have it um, respond to a redstone signal for automation. Um, down in the bottom left, it tells you the power that's in its buffer and how much power it's requiring. And then up in the top left, that's where you set up your configurations for inputs and outputs. Um, we won't go into that in too much detail. The important yeah. thing is, is place rock, pound rock, get goodies. <laughs> All right, so here's one of the things. I went out and dug up some of this osmium stuff, which apparently everything in mechanism needs. And looking through NEI, looking through the uses, I can smelt it to make one ingot, which seems like a poor idea. I can put it in my crusher to get two dust. I can put it in... Where'd it go? Uh, I don't even see. Can, can you not crush it? Huh. Oh, no, right. So I can put it in your enrichment chamber to get two dust. That's right. Or we can put it in your purification chamber with oxygen and get three clumps and then do something else with the clumps. So I thought I'd yes. do some of that while I was here. All right. So you're going to be wanting to play with this machine down here, the purification chamber. All right. Uh, it's the next step um, in mechanism. But before you can use a purification chamber, you need oxygen. Okay. Um, you can get away with using flint to supply the oxygen. Why flint? I don't know. Um, but it uses ridiculous amounts of flint, far more than you could easily get hold of in game right. by pounding on gravel. So we need oxygen, oxygen which I see in your tube over you here. You need this little 
device in the back here, which is the electrolytic separator. Oh, of course. Okay. H2O, it right? Takes water, but it requires deionized water. Normal uh -oh. TFC water won't work. And it does. Uh, it uses power yes. to separate um, out hydrogen and oxygen. So that's um, the where oxygen. the deionized water goes. Okay. Exactly. Um, you're going to go through a lot of oxygen um, in the purification chamber. Uh, the hydrogen uh, is rather critical as well because it's what powers the jetpack. Uh, uh -huh. um, and you um, definitely want to get hold of a bit of that. Plus, I'm feeding the excess hydrogen at the moment into this gas uh, generator so that um, I'm not wasting the excess because you get to the point where you start dumping gas out. Um, so this just feeds some power back into the system and makes okay. it a little bit more efficient. Nice. Uh, which is kind of cool. So, Gas yes, burning the, generator. Got it. The separator pumps oxygen into the purification chamber and will allow you to process your osmium. So throw it in there. Cool. All right. So before we move forward, I just wanted to look at this for a second. This how to make deionized water was really the sticking point. And Sim mentioned this, but I thought I'd go through it in the um, in NEI for a second. So, deionized. So we want to make deionized water. And here we can click on it in here and say, I want this. And it says, okay, well, you can squeeze cactus. Unfortunately, there's no... You can make cactus, but you can't grow them because, well... You're not supposed to be able to grow them because you're not supposed to be able to get Minecraft sand, but we'll not go into that. Uh, so that really isn't a way to do it. Um, is, is that the only way it says? Uh, no, there is um, use of... Um, you can get deionized water uh, from uh, Beam. You can squeeze uh, it. Yeah, it's very, very convoluted trying to find anything in any eye that will tell you how to do that. You have to just kind of know that that railcraft tank will gather deionized water when it rains, basically. Pretty much. All right. Um, yeah, I had to figure that out in a creative world, and I was trying all sorts of different options to make steam when yep. I realized that the railcraft tank collected water and output deionized water by default. Nice. So that was a lifesaver. Okay, so I can throw a stack of this osmium in here, and we're going to get triple somethings, and we can see it using up some oxygen. Actually, it looks like, well, it's keeping it full, but it looks like maybe quite a bit of oxygen. It does burn through it at a fairly heavy rate. Right. But with your setup, you should have pretty much unlimited oxygen at this point, right? Yeah, I, I run out of power before I run out of anything else. At the ah. Although Time I, for more power, Jen. Well, now that I've got the extra three um, wind turbines upstairs, uh, the balance is actually looking pretty good. I'm actually at a point where I'm uh, not experiencing too many slowdowns. The cool. other thing that I did do was I spent the resources early to throw efficiency upgrades, mm -hmm. um, energy upgrades into the machines so that they use a lot less power. All right. So I now have... A dozen clumps and it's still working on things, but apparently I put this in the mech crusher. Yep. That's the only crusher that will work on these particular clumps. At least it makes a little bit of noise. Not quite like my crusher, but it makes a little bit of noise. No, no, the um, immersive engineering crusher is a whole level of awesome above <laughs> most other machines in uh, modern Minecraft. Okay, so now I have to take the dirty osmium dust and enrich it with... No, you oh, just enrich it. it. Enrich oh, it yeah, with os into chamber. osmium yeah. dust. Okay, so yeah, I need an enrichment chamber. And there we go. Now we're at osmium dust, which I think you can smelt into osmium ingots, right? Yeah, that's correct. So you've converted your one osmium into three clumps, then crush those three clumps down into dirty dust, which you've then cleaned up, and now you've got three ingots out of the one original ore. Okay. The next so step 
in mechanism um, will actually quadruple ores, but it requires multiple gases and a whole bunch of infrastructure, which is just a little beyond me at the moment. Oh yeah, right. So I was looking at this. So going back to NEI, so you can smelt it for one, you can enrich it for two, you can purify it for three, which is what we did, and then it adds another step going through the crusher and the purification and all that, or uh, enrichment. You can see injection it for four, or you can do a dissolution with sulfuric acid, which turns it into osmium slurry, which you can then combine with deionized water to get clean osmium slurry, which you can then put in a crist chemical crystallizer to get osmium crystals, which you can then put into a C injection chamber to get osmium shards, which you can then purify to get osmium clumps and crush to get dirty and enrich to get dust. And I think so, if you do all that, you get a five times thing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty but substantial increases. That's but kind of a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> I don't mind it though, because I think that with mechanism, at least, um, you have to put effort in to get your yep. ore multiplications. It's yep. not just all magical stuff. So you're spending a lot of time and having a lot of fun putting all the bits and pieces together. Oh, there is a little crusher dude in here. Yeah. It is bigger on the inside than the outside, though, I bet. Because oh, absolutely. it's much smaller than my, my crusher is. All right. So I'm going to let that process. Um, what else? Is that is that the thing? Is that the jam? Uh, that's pretty much the jam, but once you get this set up, then you get to the situation where you have stacks of steel like this, oh, yeah. and barrels with a dozen stacks of 64 iron dust, which can be processed straight into steel and all of that sort of stuff. Yep, it does uh, get us to that next level for sure. Yeah. Man, now, how much did. digging did you have to do to get this much iron uh, and steel and stuff? A reasonable amount, but again, um, with the um, the uh, wonderful atomic disassembler, uh, the mining definitely goes a lot quicker. The stick um, of incredible power! That's right. Or something. And couple that with the fact that um, I can now triple the ores, uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. It definitely gets you to the point that you need to be when you start looking at the recipes for some of the other things right. um, and the amounts of um, raw materials that you require. So another thing I wanted to build takes strontium, which I went and found, and we can corn it for two. We actually can use the, the strontium ore for some items, some bees and some stuff, so we want to keep a little bit of the actual ore around. Uh, we can crush it in your crusher for four, or we can crush it in my crusher for three. So I'm going to go ahead and crush that up while I'm here. And I'll get four out of this instead of three from the IE crusher. And we've got another set of dust there. I'll smelt that up later. And the other thing is, I have the, me the means to process steel and iron and pig iron pretty, pretty well now. Pretty automated. What I don't have the pr means to do is process blue and red steel. So I have brought weak blue steel dust and high carbon black steel dust, which we've made in the past. That's just um, some basic, you know, steel, black bronze, nickel, whatever. We can make that easily enough, but we can't process it. So we're going to do this, and we're going to put these together into the high carbon version. And now, I forget where it is, but somewhere in this mess of mechanism stuff, yes, we have to have a purification chamber with oxygen to make amalgam. And then once we have that, we can blast furnace it or arc furnace it. So let's purify some of this stuff. We're going to purify this and it's going to make amalgam. That, that's what it's supposed to do. Yep. Crazy high-tech weird magic. Alright, there we go. The purification chamber. Alright, so now once we get the amalgam, we can blast... Oh yeah, I want to talk about this. So, you can blast furnace it, i.e. blast furnace it into red steel ingots. It takes uh, basically 1,200 ticks, and if you watch as NEI goes past, or, yeah, 1,200, a single coal coke, there it is, 
takes uh, gives you 1,200 ticks. So it's basically one cold coke per red steel ingot, and you get slag. Now we just made this fancy arc furnace, which can also process it with power. However, you have to add coke dust, and coke dust requires cold coke to be crushed in a crusher. So. I feel like the arc furnace should be a little better because you basically have to have the exact same thing. You have to have the amalgam, you have to have the coke dust, you get out an ingot and you get out slag. But the arc furnace requires a huge build and it requires power and then you have to actually go through the crushing stage to get this. So honestly I think it's better just to blast furnace this. I suppose the arc furnace is probably faster but you know, whatever. Alright anyway I just wanted to mention that so now with use of your lovely purification chamber we can make red and blue steel and not have to go through the um, the dealy bop the anvils and all that good stuff it's actually not the anvils that are the biggest problem it's the forge because you have to sit there waiting for everything to warm up and then if you oh I didn't need that I needed this uh, then you have to wait for it all to warm up and then if you mess it up it cools off and you have to put it back in and get it warmed up again blah 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 it's just takes yeah. a lot of work that's just it I don't mind forging but uh, when you're doing it for a while it starts to drag so yep oh and here's your IE windmills I kinda miss those so that front one is the basic that's one the this one is not lighting for because IE. If you come in front of it, it will probably fix like the There it goes. Glitch, yeah. So this one's advanced, and the one down there is just basic one, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I started off with the basic one, very quickly built the advanced one, then yep. I moved to the water wheels. It looks uh, cool in the, in the side of your tower here. I like that. Yeah. And, oh, and it is open on the back. I was going to say it should be like open on the back so that air will flow through here, but it is. Very nice. There we go. We've got amalgam. And I'm going to go ahead and process this and finish. I think that's about it. I can finish up doing this osmium and strontium while I'm here. And then I think I'm going to head back to base and um, build some stuff. Yeah, here's 64 strontium. Perfect. Uh, let's put some more of that in there. All right, then I think I'm going to head back to my low tech base and uh, use some of these newfound goodies to. <laughs> You guys are going to get a kick out of this. Automate my biodiesel, which is not going to be a one-by-one one magic block that just fixes everything. Um, it, it'll be an interesting little build, I think, so we're going to do that in a little bit. Oh, you know what, guys? I just looked at the recording. We're going to do that in the next episode, because that's already been a full half hour of messing around over here in Sim's base. You know what would be cool to end on, Sim? What's that? Can I borrow your 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 floaty wings? Uh, not 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 your jetpack wings, your floaty wings. Ah. Uh, and I need to make a set of floaty wings too soon. Uh, well, actually, um, how about before you leave? Um, and what was so this takes plastic. Yeah. Plastic takes these rods, which takes pellets, which takes... Oh, the PRC with oxygen and liquid ethylene and substrate. Wow, this is a lot of steps. Substrate yes. takes ethylene and deionized water. Liquid ethylene takes... How do you get liquid ethylene? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a bit of work. It'd take another episode to explain that. That was joyous as well. You don't have the the con deconcentrator and concentrator and all that, right? Um, you mean this machine up here? Oh, rotary condensator. All right, and that thing will somehow make ethylene for you. All right. Well, we'll have to get to that later, but uh, apparently. Sim has all the bits and pieces to make the beautiful hang glider. Let me go all the way up top. Where, where's the top of the top? Over here. You have this. Yeah, actually, I'll join you up there. What's this? Have this first. What's this? Oh, you've made the sticks. More sticks of power. It's it's amazing. 
All right, I gotta go all the way to the top, and we're gonna take a little look around. I hope it's morning, because it looks dark out here. But I'm hoping it's turning morning. Probably not. Where's the sun? Ah, it's moving. All right, I'm gonna hang out here for just a second and cut the re the recording back in in the morning, because it'll be way prettier. Be right back. All right, so we're so far up in the world that the sun is already up and the moon is still not past the horizon. We're, we're in the top of the world. Anyway, it is now morning and we have our hang glider out. Yes, let us take a little tour of Sims based via air. Woo! And this is the first time that I will have been flying in this pack at all. Looks pretty good out here. Of course, I can't stop myself. I'm just floating forward on the old glider, but uh, very nice. Looks pretty cool from the air. Like the uh, the water wheels and the the waterfall and all that. And Sin was just telling me there's a very cool little area over here with a double ravine and some waterfalls or something like that. So we're gonna end the episode just floating over here nice and slowly and check this little area out. Did I did I miss it? Are we about here? Yeah, keep going. I'm gonna get up here. I'm just about to the ground, so. Uh oh, pack right past the water. Um, uh, what is that thing called? Beehive, right? But I don't want to fall into the ravine, so let me stop over here. I hear a spider. No. Okay, so we have some streams from the the old streams mod. Yeah, that's a ravine, all right. This is not supported up here, is it? No. That's all scary. Wow. All right, so this is cool. Nice waterfall. There's, oh, there's another one up there. I see it. Yeah. Can't fly up, but I can swim. I know how to swim, man. It's cool. Oh, yeah, this is a really neat little area. That's a big waterfall for streams. That's very nice. And I think this is all generated before the latest streams update where it makes the underwater or underground uh, streams and stuff, so... Very cool double waterfall into a ravine. Well, into a floating <laughs> little piece over top of the ravine. But uh, yeah, all right, guys. Pretty Very cool. nice. Then. Any plans for a build over here? Uh, I'm thinking about yeah. building something at the top simply because it's just such a chill place. Make it kind of a cool POI or something. Come over and relax around the stream. That's a cool, good idea. Yep. Very cool. All right, folks. Well, like I said, that's uh, going to be a full episode for today. So uh, we're going to have to come back and do some more building of other things tom tomorrow. In the next episode, of course, I'm going to head back to base and get started on that right now. But hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me, Sam. Cool base and right on with all the, the magic tech stuff that makes no sense but is very awesome. Always a pleasure, mate. <laughs> all right. Catch you guys later.